Alright, so this could look a little bit confusing at first, but it's colorful, so it's fun, right? Um, I'm going to go through this pretty slowly and probably will repeat myself a lot and probably will talk in circles, but all that will be for the purpose of you um, truly understanding how dilations work, because it can be a little confusing and I don't want it to be confusing, um, but I'll, you know, it will involve some, some explanation here. So... Um, a dilation is a transformation in which uh, the distances of all the points in the, in the graph of a function from an axis, like the y-axis for horizontal uh, dilation or the x-axis for vertical transfer, uh, dilation, in which the distance of all those points from an axis are multiplied by a common factor. Like all the points, you know, if if the points were a certain distance away and then take that distance and multiply it by two or multiply it by three um, so dilations can be they're also called um, vertical or horizontal stretches and um, and actually some people will refer to as a um, when the when the graph shrinks or is compressed as a form of dilation um, so dilation is a catch-all phrase. Uh, I think, well, in, in this I've used dilation and compression as, as opposites. So if it's, so a, d a dilation is a stretch and a compression is, is a shrink. Um, so that's, that's how I'm going to use those words. Uh, but there, there, people do use the words differently, so it can be a little bit confusing in that, in that respect too. Um, so we're talking about stretches or um, com uh, compressions, dilations, um, and I think I think you'll get the flavor of this as we go through these examples. So what I did was I I created a graph of um, a function y equals x squared, and then I showed it um, with every kind of dilation or compression. So vertical dilation, vertical compression. Horizontal dilation, horizontal compression, and I'll show you how that how each one is related to the others, and and how they all work. So, and then I want to um, make some observations about why um, it, it can be confusing to to pick them out. So, okay, so this y equals x squared. That's the original function. Uh, everything else is a, is a dilation or compression of that original function. Um, and then, so I've showed the both the equation and how it's modified in order to do the dilation or compression, and then actually what it looks like. So let's just go. Um, let's just go through these. Let's look at the vertical dilations and compressions first. Okay. Um, so so let's look at this red one. Uh, y equals two times x squared. That's a vertical dilation by a factor of 2. It's The whole graph is stretched upward relative to the x-axis um, by a factor of 2. And because it's stretched upward, it gets narrower. Uh, it's just like, I don't know, you stretch anything upward and it gets narrower, right? Um, so let's, but let's kind of unpack this. This is a vertical. So if I if I multiply the whole function by two, um, I stretch it or I dilate it by a factor of two. Well, what does that mean? Let's look at some uh, let's look at some examples here. So the original function here, y equals x squared. Um, I'm going to pick out this point here. Okay. The distance and all this this dilation occurs with respect to the x-axis. So a, a vertical dilation or compression will happen with respect to the x-axis. Um, points will be getting farther uh, away from the x-axis or closer to the x-axis. And then horizontal compressions and dilations occur with respect to the y-axis. They'll, they'll be getting farther away or closer to the y-axis. So um, in the original function, when x is 1, y is 1, right? Uh, it's y equals x squared. 1 squared is 1. So the distance from the x-axis 
to that point is one unit. Well, look where that point is on the vertically dilated or ver vertically stretched function. Um, it's it's two units away from the x-axis here. So that distance has been multiplied by two. Um, yeah, I'm trying to pick out another point that would be easy to see. Unfortunately, uh, my graph is kind of short, so uh, it gets pretty difficult to, to see where all the points are. Uh, but you see that, so the distance, the original distance, um, when you look at the, when x is 1, this point, 1, 1, the original distance was 1 unit away from the x-axis. Uh, because it's Now, because it's been vertically dilated by a factor of 2, that distance has been multiplied by 2. It's now 2 units away. So same thing um, at x equals 2. On the original function, when x is 2, y is 4. Uh, but on the vertically dilated function, I would multiply that distance of 4 by 2. So actually, um, that the distance from the x-axis to the, the point on this red uh, parabola would be 8 units, which makes sense, right? 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. So that would be 8 units away from the x-axis. So that's a vertical dilation, um, and it's by a factor of 2. You're taking the distance of all the points from the x-axis and multiplying those distances by 2. All right. Um, what can be confusing is that a vertical dilation looks like a horizontal compression. right? When you stretch something vertically, it gets narrower. Well, when you're compressing something horizontally, it gets narrower, narrower. You're, 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 you know, compressing it. You're shrinking it horizontally. Uh, but let's look at the difference. Um, one, so, so this green parabola, uh, y equals two x in parentheses squared, is a horizontal compression um, by a factor of of one half. So uh, what happened is that the distances away, let's say, let's look at this, um, this point here. So we're looking at a, a horizontal compression now. Um, so it's with respect to the y-axis. So if, if we look at this point on the original curve, when x is 2, y is, uh, y is 4. This was originally two units away from the y-axis. Well, if I take that distance and multiply it by one half, um, it, I'll, the point is one unit away, right there, which is right on that green curve. So I take that distance from the y-axis and I multiply it by one half, and that's why this graph is um, is so narrow. It's it's gotten narrower by a factor of one half. It's it's half as wide as it used to be. Okay, here's the blue is the original function, green is half as wide. Now, uh, so it's it gets narrower, just like the vertical dilation gets narrower, but it gets uh, but it's even narrower than the vertical dilation. So the so the red function is that y equals x squared vertically dilated by a factor of two. So it's stretched upward. It gets two times as tall as it used to be. And the green one is uh, y equals 2x squared. And that's the function compressed horizontally by a factor of 1 half. Um, uh, so they both get narrower, but the green one is even narrower than the, than the red one. So they look similar, and they have similar effects, but, but they're not the same. Now, it may be confusing. Uh, you would think if this is stretched by a factor of, of one half, um, uh, why why do you multiply by two here and not by one half? Um, well, the way I remember that, I mean, you can you can you can do a table of values, and you know, plug in your x's and plug in your y's, plug you know, pick out some x's and see what the y values would be, and you'll see that it actually you know makes a narrower. Uh, narrower parabola like that. 
Um, the way I remember, though, so that's kind of counterintuitive. The vertical ones act like you would expect. Uh, a vertical dilation by a factor of 2, you multiply uh, the function by 2, the whole function by 2. If you want to compress it by a factor of 1 half, you multiply it by 1 half. Well, um, you can remember that the horizontal uh, compressions and dilations don't act like you would expect them to. Um, or the way I remember it is the horizontal compression uh, looks like a vertical dilation. See, they both get narrower. So to me, that makes sense that if vertically dilating uh, a graph by a factor of 2, you multiply by 2 and it, and it gets narrower. Well, I multiply by 2 for the horizontal compression and it gets narrower. Um, so, so it's related, but not, not the same. I don't know if that helps. Um, okay, so let's let's go back to our vertical dilations and compressions. So this this red one is is y equals x squared dilated or stretched by a factor of two. It got two times as uh, as tall as it used to be. Uh, let's look at the vertical compression. Um, that's this black one. So it's being squashed. Um, it's shrinking by a factor of one half, meaning it's half as tall as it used to be. So if you look at this point, for example, where x is 2 and y is 4, uh, this distance here, distance from the x-axis is 4 units. Well, on the shrunken version of itself, where it's compressed by a factor of 1 half, um, that distance is only 2 now. Right? So 4 times 1 half is 2. So this black one is half as tall as it used to be. So uh, when you vertically compress a function, it gets wider. So it's similar to the horizontal dilation where you're stretching it uh, horizontally, but it's not the same. It's not the same. Uh, it has a similar effect, but it's not the same. So there's a vertical uh, compression by a factor of 1 half. Take the original function, take the distances, of the points from that x-axis and just cut those distances in half, multiply them by, by the one half. And for example, if this is four units away originally, that same point on the black curve is is only two units away from the x-axis. All right, so those are vertical dilations and compressions. If you want to dilate uh, a function by a factor, then multiply the whole function by that factor. If you want to compress a um, function by a factor, multiply that whole function by the factor. Uh, if the factor is between um, 0 and 1, meaning it's a fraction, then there'll be a compression, a vertical compression. Um, so which makes sense, right? So if you if you want to stretch something and make it twice as tall as it used to be, multiply it by two. If you want to compress something, you want to make it half as tall as it used to be, multiply it by one half. So the vertical ones make sense, and the the vertical um, transformations are called outside transformations because uh, if you want to manipulate the equation, you 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 do stuff to the outside, as it were. Uh, so x if x squared is the original function. You know, you do stuff to the outside. Um, whereas with the horizontal uh, transformations, these are called inside transformations. So um, I, I directly manipulate that x inside the function um, like that. All right, let's talk about. Um, so we did. We so we looked at the horizontal. Um, uh, what do we look at? The compression, right? y equals 2x squared, um, uh, which meant that we compressed it by a factor of 1 half. So I think the, the horizontal dilations and compressions are, are um, kind of not what you would expect. If you're compressing by a factor of 1 half, you multiply x by 2. Uh, so let's look at the horizontal dilation by a factor of 2. So again, if you want to dilate it by a factor of 2, 
you multiply x by one half, you know, one over two, um, and that's this orange one, really wide. It's the widest one. So it's it's similar to the uh, vertical compression in that the graph, uh, if you start with the blue one, with the vertical, if you compress it vertically, it gets wider because you're squishing it down. Um, uh, but when you directly horizontally dilate something, it, it gets it gets a lot wider than if you vertically um, compress it by a similar factor. All right, so this is a horizontal dilation by a factor of two. So I'm multiplying x by one over two. And what that means is the distance that the points used to be um, on the original graph, I, I multiply those by two. So, for example, if I take this point on the original graph, it's two units away from the y-axis. Well, the new point is uh, four units away from the y-axis. So that's what so that's what um, dilates it or stretches it horizontally. Um, so again. Um, so you look at these, so here's, so the blue is the original. If you look at the orange and black, um, vertical compression and horizontal dilation are similar, uh, but not equivalent. In both cases, the graph gets wider, but as you can see, it's not, it's not the same graph, right? So when you're doing dilations, um, be careful. Something might look like a vertical compression, but it might actually be a horizontal dilation. Um, and, and and vice versa. Okay, and, and similarly, uh, if here's the original function, horizontal compression and vertical dilation are similar, but not equivalent. In both cases, the graph gets narrower, but it gets you know gets narrower by different amounts. Um, and uh, the way I remember, so this helps me remember when do you. So if you have a f um, you know, when do you say one half and when do you say two, for example? I'm doing all like uh, similar um, factors, right? Two or one over two. Uh, well, if a vertical dilation by a factor of two, you multiply it by two. And that looks like a horizontal compression, right? In both cases, the graph gets narrower. So, the horizontal, if you want to compress something by a factor of one half, you want to make it one half as wide as it was, you multiply it by two because it looks like uh, when you do a vertical dilation, you, when you multiply by two. Uh, this is just how my head works. There might be a better system for you. Um, and then similarly, uh, uh, if you vertically compress something by a factor of one half, you make it one half as tall as it was, you multiply by one half, and that looks like a um, horizontal dilation. They both, they both get wider. So if you want to dilate by a factor of two, uh, meaning make the graph twice as wide as it used to be, multiply x by one half. So you can do this with any function. Um, you, uh, I'll just draw like, you know, if you need to manipulate the equation, you've got y equals um, x cubed or whatever, and you need to dilate it vertically by a factor of three, make it three times as tall as it used to be, just multiply that whole function by three, etc. If you need to compress it by a factor of one third, make it a third as tall as it used to be, one third x cubed. If you're starting with a graph, oops, if you're starting with a graph and you need to just visually um, do the dilation or compression, just keep in mind um, these ideas that when you're vertically dilating or compressing something, you're taking the distance from the x-axis, and um, if it's a dilation, you're taking that distance it and multiplying it by um, the factor. Uh, you know, if it's dilated by a factor of three, dilated by a factor of four and a half, just take the original distances and multiply them by that factor. If you're compressing by a factor of, of one half, one third, whatever. Um, take those distances and, and cut them in half or a third or whatever, uh, and then actually um, um, move it like this. All right, good luck.